Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for this evening's meditation is the New Testament reading from Ephesians chapter 6. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, two weeks ago, tomorrow, or on Monday, it'll be, it was the Monday before school started, My family and I decided to enjoy one last day of summer, if you will. So we decided to go down to Red Lodge to go hiking, and then we were going to go drive up the Beartooth, and we did that. That was two weeks ago. Remember, that's when we had all the smoke and billings from wildfires. You go to the top of the Beartooth, and it was sunny, and it was fresh air, and it was just wonderful. Uh, But I want us to think to our hiking in Red Lodge. We went um, just out of Red Lodge as if you're going to the uh, ski hill, but we went on West Fork Road. I'm sure many of you have been on that road. We went to the very end of it, to the Rock Creek, the West Fork Rock Creek Trailhead. Maybe some of you guys have hiked on that. We went up to Calamity Falls, and then we went up to uh, uh, the Sentinel Falls and had a... It was just fun. (laughs) Being in Montana, hiking in the mountains just a couple of days before school. Ate lunch there at Calamity Falls, and we went up a little bit further to Sentinel Falls, and and, and that's where I want to draw your attention to. I don't know if you've ever been up to Sentinel Falls. You see the water cascading down off the rocks there on, on Rock Creek, and it's wonderful. In fact, we got to one portion of it where there's these big boulders, big rocks just sitting right there in the middle of the creek, and the water is just pounding relentlessly on the rocks, and it's just splashing around. And I thought it'd be a lovely picture. But I couldn't get the right angle from where I was standing. But you know, there was, a, there was some rocks down there, a nice five foot by five foot section of rocks. And I thought, you know, if I could get down there, it wasn't in the middle of the river or the creek, but it was pretty close to being in the front there. And, and I thought, you know, I could get there and just look right up. So I got the camera for my wife, and I went down and stepped, and I saw that it was wet but I wasn't expecting it to be that slippery. You know what happens when water is over a rock all the time and has no chance to dry? It's not mold on there, but there's that slime. You know what happens to your feet when you hit that? Foo! And as I'm falling, you know how many things can go through your mind at that time? Don't break the camera, but if you have to, drop it. Catch yourself. Don't fall in the river. Be careful. And I fell. I hit there. It was okay. But to see the look on my family's face of the shock, the fear, it was scary to do that, but it was fine. It was flat enough. And I share that story for you to hold those pictures in your mind for a moment. Two images. I want you to picture those big boulders there in the middle of the river, the creek, the rock creek, or whatever creek you picture, and the water rushing against it and pounding against it, and it's just there, not moving, standing still. And I want you to picture somebody on a rock. You can picture me if you like. It happened, but falling and slipping and not able to, to stop it. Because those two images of a rock standing so firm in the place of the force pushing against it and someone who is out of control slipping in the midst of trouble is what Paul is saying in Ephesians chapter 6. He describes the life of a Christian as one that's challenging and difficult, and yet so strong and powerful in the Lord. You see, that's what Paul has been talking about in this book of Ephesians. And as a church, with the readings that have been assigned for each Sunday, we have read through the whole book, almost every verse of the book of Ephesians. If you've been keeping track, for the last eight 
Saturday night. Since July 14th, our New Testament reading has been from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. We've hit all the chapters, and now it's the very last chapter of the book, the last reading for us in Ephesians, and next week the New Testament reading will be in James. And what Paul has been saying here in the book of Ephesians is teaching Christians how to be Christians. Now in chapter 2, that we're faith and grace is not something we earn and work for. No, grace is a gift from God that we trust by faith. And Paul says in the book of Ephesians, that's not just for, for Jews, it's for the Gentiles. It's not just for, for unbelievers, it's for all people. And all people are united in one faith around one Lord Jesus Christ. United in one church. And if you recall reading through Ephesians, how that faith is something that we don't just practice as a church, but individually and grow and mature in the faith. In all the different vocations that we have as people, as husbands, as wives, as children, as masters and servants and all the like, and how those things take place, Paul has told us, and here at the very end of the chapter, the very end of the book, Paul knows the life of a Christian it's hard. And it'll be a struggle for these new Christians he's writing to. It's a struggle for Christians today. And so what does God have Paul write? He says in verse 10, the first verse of our text, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Paul is encouraging Christians to be strong in the Lord and the strength of His might. What he is saying is don't look to yourself for strength and knowledge. Don't look to yourself and your energy and your effort to work through your struggles. Don't look to the strength of your own faith to get you through. No, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Why? Because the life of a Christian is hard. That's what Paul goes on to say. He says in verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. He is naming your enemy. He's naming the one who you need strength to guard against and defend yourself against and defeat. How's this enemy appear to you? Paul says it this way, we, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Paul is naming your struggle. And if someone were to ask you today, what's your struggle? What's challenging you today? And what would we name? We could name the things that Jesus talks about in our gospel reading, couldn't we? The things that come from our heart. If we were honest with the person who would ask you, what's your struggle? We could say, well, we struggle with evil desires, evil thoughts, and sexual immorality, and theft, and murder, and coveting, and, witness, and wickedness, and all of those desires that come from within. flesh and blood sort of things, aren't they? Or maybe we can list the challenge of things that aren't coming from within, but the things that surround God's people and His church. We know those threats and those challenges. A culture, a political climate that doesn't want to hear about Jesus and His Word. Or people who present themselves as teachers of God's Word only to distort and let, let it appeal to people who have itching ears. 
Maybe it's the challenge of health, of job, of employment. Maybe it's a financial, financial struggle of making things, making ends meet. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's getting along with your neighbors who are not Christian. Or maybe it's getting along with that individual who just drives you nuts. Those are flesh and blood challenges, aren't they? And what does Paul say in our text regarding the struggle of a Christian? He says, verse 12, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against the things that we see. No, those people that make life difficult in our lives are also victim to your enemy, the devil. You see, that's what Paul is saying. He says, be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. No, it's the devil we wrestle against. And what does he do? He uses the things of this world to make your life hard and miserable. And it's a struggle. And Paul is saying, your struggle is not against those things of flesh and blood. Your struggle is not against the things you see. No, this is a spiritual battle for your life. That Satan is trying to lead you astray in the struggle. And the challenge that you are facing today. And Paul is making it blatantly clear who your enemy is. It's the devil. And he is a sneaky, lying devil who deceives, who uses whatever means possible to lead you astray and make you struggle and make you think that you have to solve the problem and that you have to overcome the challenge and that you have to have the strength to face whatever it is and that lie it's the lie that says you can step on that rock and not slip and what happens we step out thinking we're under control our feet hit the rock we think it's kind of wet and it's slip and slimy and we see ourselves falling and we wonder what happened you know where i got that lively adventurous spirit to go out on rocks like that from my grandpa my grandpa would tell the story when he was first dating my grandma it was one of their first dates by my grandpa's farm in Nebraska, and he took her out. It was in the wintertime. Goose Lake was frozen, and he always had fun driving out on Goose Lake. That might sound crazy. I thought it was until I lived in Minnesota and did the same thing. But grandpa was going to take the car and go and drive out on the lake, and my grandma was scared to death and said no. And he said, well, I'll just have some fun. And he took his front tires and put it on. And wouldn't you know, the ice gave way and the front of the car sunk down in the mud. And Grandpa looked at Grandma and said, well, do you want to walk home? She goes, no. So Grandpa got out of the car, walked a mile and a half, two miles back to his farm. I don't know what that conversation was like with his dad. Got the pickup, went over the tractor and pulled the car out. Isn't that what Jesus does in our struggles? He's the one who comes to rescue you. When you've relied on your strength and your wisdom, when you've relied on yourself to solve whatever problem it is that is a burden in your life, Jesus is the one who comes to rescue, and Paul is saying, find your strength not in you, but find your strength in the Lord and in the strength of His might, because God, Jesus, is the one who comes and saves His people. What do we do as His people? Listen to our text. 
Paul says it three times. Put on the armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. You go to verse 13, talking about the armor of God, and he says, Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand firm. Stand, therefore. Our job as a Christian is to stand firm firm like a boulder in the middle of the river where the water is rushing over and against on every side god is saying stand firm not on your strength but on the strength of the lord that's what god has been calling his people to do from the beginning think back to exodus the children of Israel are led out of Egypt. It's the Red Sea on one side. It's Pharaoh on his, on his army on the other. They are trapped. And what does Moses say? Do not be afraid. Stand firm. And you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, will, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. To stand firm. And the Lord will fight for you. Indeed, that's what the Lord does. That's what we hear in Isaiah chapter 59. Where we hear the sins of the people. We hear how they have fallen away from God. We hear how there is no one to say but the Lord himself. And how does God respond to his people? Isaiah 59, the second half of verse 15 says it this way. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene, so his own arm worked salvation for him. And his own righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. It's a foreshadowing of the deliverance of Jesus. Jesus is your mighty warrior who saves. Jesus is the mighty warrior who comes to rescue you in the midst of your challenge, in the midst of your struggle. And here's the thing. He has. Jesus has already brought you victory by his death and resurrection your enemy the devil is defeated defeated when jesus died on the cross and three days later rose again satan no longer has power over jesus or you the beloved child of jesus redeemed holy, baptized in the name of Jesus. That's where you get this armor of God that Paul talks about. This armor is armor given in the waters of baptism. Just listen how it's described. A belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, a gospel of peace, a shield of faith, a helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, those gifts of faith and truth and peace given to you in baptism by the mighty warrior who came to rescue you by his death and resurrection. The victory is yours. Satan has no power over you. And yet he still wages the battle against you. And what Paul is calling us to do today as Christians, what he encourages Christians to do is to stand firm, not focused on our strength and our abilities. No, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. 
That's our strength. That's our hope in the midst of the battle. In the midst of the struggles we face in this body and life, we stand firm like that boulder in the middle of Rock Creek with the waters washing over it, waves pounding against it, we will continue to have burdens and struggles and hurts, and yet we are able to stand firm in the victory of Jesus. It's your victory today. It's the victory that gives you strength to face whatever struggles may come. And it's the victory that we will know for eternity when the Lord calls us home or when he returns on that last day. And then we will see with our eyes the strength of our Lord and the strength of his might. May the Holy Spirit continue to feed your faith that you may find and experience and trust and the strength of the Lord, and the strength of His might for your life, knowing that the victory is yours in Jesus. In His name, amen. Now may the peace of Jesus, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds the one true faith unto life everlasting. Amen.